Good day. Hello. Hello there. Alaskans, uh, Alaskans are well aware of our nation's poor financial condition, Alaska's declining oil production and revenue, as well as our state's unfunded pension liability of $11 billion. In light of these factors, I set a spending limit in March uh, with the legislature, and this morning I signed budgets meeting that spending limit. Now, doing so required vetoes totaling $412 million. With these vetoes, you could say that Alaska is at fight and wait. In these uncertain times, being at fighting weight is good for our state. Living within our means will keep Alaska fit and strong. Our administration's budget review work included hearing from individuals, organizations, people from all around this great state, both during the legislative process as well as following the legislative sessions. This budget invests in Alaska's future. It focuses on investments in energy, infrastructure, and job creation. So let's get down to details. The operating and capital budgets total $11.4 billion, including $6.9 billion in state general funds. Operating budget growth was limited to 2.9%. As you know, much of the operating budget growth is driven by statutory formulas. The budget, this budget uh, that we're releasing right now, fully funds those legal obligations, including mandated increase to the kindergarten through 12th grade formula, Medicaid formula costs, retirement system costs, uh, including the state's unfunded pension liability. It addresses our debt service costs and employee contracts. The capital budget, which the legislature passed at $3.2 billion, now totals $2.8 billion. And this includes $1.6 billion in state general funds. Infrastructure projects and energy projects comprise over $2 billion of that 2.8. The energy component alone totals $1 billion of that number. Clearly, our focus this year is on energy. You'll still see capital projects in support of education totaling nearly $300 million, and public safety projects totaling more than $265 million. When it comes to energy, we've included, as I said, over $1 billion for energy projects. These include hydroelectric generation and transmission projects, like the Susitna Hydro Project being funded at $65.7 million, Whitman Lake in Ketchikan at $8 million, Blue Lake at Sitka at $28.5 million, and the Hydro Project in Southwest Alaska at $10 million, to name a few. Renewable energy grants total $36.6 .6 million. And I would just note there, there, was, there were additional funds left in the account, so you will see a reduction on renewable energy grants, but there will not be a reduction in the projects that are funded because we have available funds. Weatherization and home energy rebates total $101 million. Power cost equalization, we put $400 million into the PCE fund, so we save that for the future with $34.3 million in annual costs uh, being appropriated. We also put $12.5 million towards the geothermal project in Mount Spur. Roads to resources funding will provide long-term jobs for Alaskans and access to our lands. We've included $8 million for that road to Umiat to finish the environmental work uh, on that stretch of highway between the Dalton and the Umiat fields. Another roads to resources goal is to access the Ambler Mining District's rich deposits. This budget includes $1.25 million to complete environmental permitting and those early public processes on that project. The budget includes $43 million for renovations um, and improvements to the Dalton Highway, that very important lifeline for oil production and jobs on the North Slope. Let's talk about natural gas. Bringing natural gas to Alaskans and to markets beyond remains a high priority for our state. Recent reports suggests that shale gas plays in the lower 48 are not as productive as once thought. Thus, more opportunity exists for Alaska gas there, as well as here at home, where many of our residents suffer under high energy costs. And for these reasons, we are moving forward on all fronts when it comes to commercializing Alaska's gas. This budget puts dollars toward the Alaska Natural Gas Pipeline Project, as well as to the in-state gas line project team. Rare earth elements. Besides making progress on roads to resources and natural gas development, I see a day when we can unlock a set of new resources for our nation. Alaska can become America's source for rare earth elements, and this budget includes funds to perform a strategic assessment of these promising deposits. More infrastructure, more opportunities, 
We've got $1.24 billion for transportation, including highway and aviation projects, over $87 million for water and sewer projects, nearly $298 million for K-12 education and university projects, deferred maintenance projects total more than $114 million. The Port of Anchorage and Point McKenzie rail extension projects are in at $30 million each, and $44 million is going to that Tanana River Bridge in the interior. So even though I exercise my line item veto authority on $400.3 million in proposed capital spending, we clearly have a healthy capital budget. Still, saving is an imperative for us given these uncertain times. Accordingly, we are adding $3 billion to the state's budget reserves. This includes saving $400 million for the Alaska Performance Scholarships, saving $200 million for in-state gas line development, saving $1.1 billion into the statutory budget reserve, saving $1 billion to forward fund K-12 education, saving $400 million for power cost equalization, and saving $60 million in the Marine Highway Vessel Replacement Fund. These specific deposits, along with spending reductions, will leave the state a balance of over $15 billion in various savings accounts when we're done. The uncertainty of our nation's fiscal condition, Alaska's declining oil production and revenue, and our state's rising annual payment towards our unfunded pension liabilities, as well as those escalating Medicaid costs, compel us to save these additional dollars. But I believe that Alaska's budget reserves, if managed well, it can be Alaska's shock absorber through difficult times, and these savings can also be used to leverage long-term economic opportunities for our people. So in closing, this budget provides significant opportunities for Alaskans today while better securing our future. And I just want to take a moment because sometimes at press conferences, um, it's easy just to kind of whip through the information and not acknowledge the hard work that went into this budget. You know, the legislature's public processes that that were in play, our own OMB uh, and our staff in the governor's office, Karen Rayfeld, the OMB director, um, has given a lot of her professional expertise and time. Steve Hildebrand in OMB is retiring this year, and he has uh, spent many years in state service, knows the budgets very well. Uh, my own staff, um, from the chief of staff to, to everybody else in these executive offices, have, have had a great hand in this budget. So I want to just take a moment to acknowledge their hard work as well. I'm going to have, I think, Karen... Rayfeld, um, come up and did you have a few things you wanted to add before we take questions, or were you just going to take questions? Governor, it's up to I you. You did a great job. Okay, of, of let's take questions. What's then. in the budget? So I'll <laughs> just be here if you need me. Well, it's, you just stay up here. It's all right, <laughs> Becky. Becky Dorsey, the um, governor. Uh, some time ago, you said if you had to pick a project that really uh, stood out as a bad project, mm -hmm. or a quibble, could you talk a bit about the the way that they? I can I can do that. You know, I, I like to do that just by telling a quick story, and that is that I love ice cream. Um, I love to have a have a bowl of it at night, and you can put a half a gallon of ice cream in the freezer. You can go get the half gallon, and you can eat it all in one night because you like it, or you can save something for tomorrow. And that's what that's what I've done, as effectively said. Uh, there are lots of good projects. There are there are, are um, vetoes made, but these are projects that we will consider again next year. Uh, certainly. I considered life and safety items. I considered infrastructure that creates opportunities in the future. Uh, deferred maintenance was also a priority. Uh, those are some of the filters that I was using. But you will find projects that were uh, left um, on the table for next year that fit those categories. But there were others as well that fit. And it was a matter of just having to make some choices. And regional balance, of course, was another, another factor. So all those factors came into play. Governor, is it correct? Am I reading this correct that you vetoed the 199 million for paying debts and leases? No, no. Do you want to? Uh, no, what, actually, let me that's the the debt buy down. Is you might remember that the legislature put in some appropriations to buy down geo bond debt and to pay off our some of our lease purchase costs for the Anchorage uh, jail, for, for example. So what we were able to reduce in the operating budget is 12.1 million for our debt service payments that we make on an annual basis. Because that debt's no longer there. To right. So they so they bought down that debt, so it helps us on the operating budget side. Okay. 
Yeah. does. Well, I base it on the experience I have in this building where in 1999 we had $9 a barrel oil and we had about a 40% hole in our general fund budget. That was only 11 years ago. Today we enjoy a surplus. We're one of the few states that do. And because our budget is based upon volatile oil prices, we have to save while, while it's harvest time when we're, when we're bringing in a lot of money because there will be lean times uh, when those oil prices uh, go down or when production goes away as we're on that, on that downward slope. Uh, when it comes to what is living within our means, I also then look to where we are as a state currently, not just to past, but where we are today. And I worked with legislators on that. I worked with them to set a spending limit. Effectively, what I did is I said, let's, um, we, have, we have more money coming in this year, but let's not spend really more than we spent last year. Uh, last year, we had the second highest capital budget in about 20 years. I said, we don't need to surpass that. We've got a healthy construction economy um, in the private sector created from last year's capital spending. This is another healthy dose. Um, we can still save 400 million more for next year, and we can have these discussions on these, these worthwhile projects next year as well. I do all that with a vision for the future and just say, um, we, wanna, we want projects that will create opportunity and create a life for our residents um, in this state. And I use those filters that we, we just spoke to, or that I just spoke to to do that. So that's in, in broad terms uh, how those choices are made and how the spending limit got set. The spending limit was not a, not a surprise. I mean, I just, I'll just describe a little bit here. From January to March, I worked with legislators to try to set a joint spending limit because my belief is if we can set a spending limit, legislators have more freedom uh, to allocate funds. It's their job to appropriate the money. Um, I have to kind of watch over the big, the big picture purse um, as, well as, as well as some of the the details, but if we arrive at a spending limit together, I offered the, the legislators more freedom in allocating those, uh, those projects. Uh, by March, it was clear that we were not going to be able to set a joint legislature executive branch uh, spending limit, and so I announced my own and just said, here's where, here's where we'll be spending to and, and no more this year. Uh, the Senate then passed their budget, which did it went right up to the spending limit by the time, so by the time it got to the House, the House could only add projects that were not, um, had not, where the Senate had not taken care of their districts. So I, I understand how that process works. Lived it, breathed it uh, in the 90s as a legislator, and now as governor, um, I have to take that statewide view, the view for our future, and, and move in this way. Well, I think, I think we can improve on uh, what happened this year. I think in, in some ways this year was an improvement upon last year, I think. And we're learning how to work, uh, work together. Sometimes it's rocky, and uh, that's, to be, that's to be expected. Yeah, Dave. There was some concern at the end of the session about um, trade-offs and vetoes against other things and so forth. And it, it, it doesn't seem that this is, that they were justified. Not necessarily accusing or oh, yeah. anything, but could you explain that if that's if there are more embezzled? Sure. And, and if that's there's some, some reason is there a reason or not to concern that? Yeah, I'd be happy I'd be happy to. First off on the on the big picture question about um, you, what you're really asking is did I retaliate against legislators? I mean that's that's the sum and substance of it. And the answer is no. Um, I wouldn't do that. I didn't do that. Um, in the I don't know, hundred plus hours, you know, that, that I've spent on this. I don't think if you asked any of my staff members they would say that that came up at all. Um, also, I don't think that there's any evidence in the budget that that's um, the case. In fact, you'll find the funding is regionally balanced. Now, you said uh, you indicated that, gee, you see some, some cuts in Bethel, but I have to tell you that the Southwest region was very well represented by their senator who co-chairs Senate Finance. They wound up with more per capita than any other district, as I, as I understand it. So the cuts to that district, um, I believe, still leave them with the highest per capita spending in the state. Uh, we'll, we'll double check that, but what that district has in this budget that's very important to them includes a new school in Pasquiag. Um, it includes the pre-maternal home in Bethel. It includes um, Quinnahawk School, I believe, is in that district as well. So there are some major projects um, 
in that district and from a, on a per capita basis I think you'll find that district fared quite well yes Becky Well, again, that goes, I mean, that goes to the underlying arguments of tax reductions. And we have declining oil production. Nobody can, nobody can dispute that. Tax reductions, to me, are meant to increase oil production, which increases revenue to the state and jobs for Alaskans. So uh, what I'm working to do when it comes to the, on the tax side is to increase oil production. And until somebody else has a better plan, which I will embrace if it's going to increase oil production, um, I'm going to continue to pursue that. Uh, but again, that's not necessarily part of this budget discussion. So. There were a lot of very uh, uh, generous bids on the uh, displacement. Yeah. Without the oil no, that's that's actually proof of what I'm saying because we gave oil tax credits and incentives to the Cook Inlet. We didn't for North Slope. Well, that. I mean, the legislature has always said we'll give you credit for exploration. They never. I could never get. I could never get that. I could never get them to to take that argument and, and pass a bill that for with tax credits so bottom line is tax incentives for cook inlet are working and that's that's what we're going to take to north slope so how about on the budget oh we're going to go on online operator we're ready for online q a you can take yourself off question mode please thank you one moment if you'd like to ask a question please press star one Hi, Ted. Um, right, can you maybe just give us a what were they and why did you make them? Ted, I think I'm going to let you kind of work your way through through the budget here. I've outlined um, what I funded. If you have some specific projects, I mean, you can you can go ahead. There there are a lot of vetoes. There's no question. And for me to start to list them uh, when you have access to the entire list, it would not be productive at this point. You know, I think that's a great discussion uh, for another day. I can tell you that last year I vetoed $300 million out of the state budget. This year I vetoed $400 million, saving Alaska citizens $700 million in savings that wouldn't otherwise be there. I also did that in light of the fact that these spending levels across these last two years have been about the second highest in the last 20, 25 years. Um, so it's basically the, the, no, the notion that we can have a healthy capital budget, we can, we can work to put in place that infrastructure we need, we can create the jobs now and the opportunities for the future with the capital budget that we have, but we don't have to spend it all right now. We don't have to eat that half a gallon of ice cream tonight, we can actually save some for tomorrow. We're still online. We're still online. Go ahead, Sean. Sean, go ahead with your question. Uh, I guess, sir. Um, so what did you decide not to uh, do in the operating budget? I'm sorry. Say, Sean, cut, say that again. Uh, sure. What did you decide not to do in the operating budget veto? The only operating budget vetoes that we did um, related to debt service going down, and so we were able to to veto that appropriation. And as I indicated, most of the operating budget is has legally mandated increases. So there's, there, it was harder for me to get um, the sizable amounts that I could, uh, that I could from the capital budget. Because I'm, I'm legally mandated to pay for, you know, K through 12 education, Medicaid, et cetera. Go ahead, 
there are two of you from the office? Yeah. Oh, the, the, uh, you're speaking to the Waldron Park? Right. Yeah, that was one of the vetoes in Anchorage, and, and for a couple reasons. One is Anchorage asked for quite a number of park maintenance appropriations, meaning that existing parks, they can't even fund their own maintenance of their existing parks right now. And I wasn't able to fund the, all of the maintenance requests for those parks. And so I felt like if, if the city wants to add a new park, um, the city at this point will need to will need to make that appropriation because I'm I'm still struggling to get state money to pay for maintenance of city parks, which is kind of an unusual place for the state to be in to begin with. Can go ahead with your question? Yes, Governor, uh, from Homer here, the Homer Tribune, wanted to hear about the Homer Gasline project, mm -hmm. how it fares. Um, the Homer Gasline project was vetoed. Uh, Homer instead. Um, had two significant projects that I can think of. One was the solid waste services project, and one was the, uh, the transmission lines uh, for electri electrical transmission. And the cruise ship dock, is that right? And the dock, dock improvements as well. Bill McAllister. It's Bill McAllister with CBS 11. Uh, if I'm reading this right, you vetoed uh, 7.5 million from the Port of Anchorage expansion. Um, have you spoken with the port director or the mayor about how that might affect the expansion project? Um, I know that, that uh, my budget director, Karen Rayfield, uh, was able to speak with um, former Governor Sheffield this morning about the port project. I also uh, can tell you that uh, both the port of Anchorage and uh, the port of Point McKenzie both received $30 million. Both uh, were shaved by $7.5 million. Even with that, I've got to tell you, Bill, I think that Port of Anchorage appropriation is probably the single largest appropriation in, in my recent memory to the port. So uh, there's a lot of work that can be done with that. Uh, and have, I have not been able to speak with the mayor yet this morning or this afternoon in answer to your question. Chris, go ahead with your question. Governor, you uh, talked a bit about the road to the EIS project that you spoke about yesterday at the RTC. Um, the Corps of Engineers is taking public comment on it um, through the middle of next week. Should readers assume that you expect the state would be looking to fund either through GF appropriations or pay the financing to fund that road um, solely by itself, or are there other options on the discussion? I see students. Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll work with any, with any funding mechanism to get that road uh, moving in the public interest. You know, it's it's one thing to say that we support resource development, but if we're willing to, to help build a road as a state to access lands and decrease the costs of that exploration and create jobs, that's something that the state ought to be doing. So we have $8 million of funding in this budget for the road to Umiat uh, for continued work on that. We'll continue to push forward. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, discount any other means of funding the road at this point. I just know that we're, we're pressing forward uh, with, with these appropriations to move that forward. I don't have any other questions on mine at this time. Thank you. Becky. Oh, hold on. Chris, Chris, I'm sorry, Chris just came back to me. Go ahead, operator, then we'll go back on that two more after that. Mm -hmm. If you'd um, allow me to briefly follow up, I, I didn't pose that very well. Has the state been working under the assumption that it would be state government building the road to Omiya? And the funding At least to, to uh, a large extent, that's correct. Becky. Okay, and Ed online, do you want to take this question? Okay, then we'll go back on that two after Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Go ahead. You're off, but uh, I'll put you back online too. Okay. Becky. Uh, the reduction of the 12.5 million was for the um, Homer Energy rebate and revitalization. Is mm -hmm. that even enough to accomplish what the Corps of Engineers is We believe it does, but Karen, can you speak to that? Um, it, yes, Governor, I can. The um, Alaska Housing Finance, as you know, that's a very, very successful program that's going to, particularly in the home energy rebate, they've had a number of uh, individuals on the wait list. I don't have that right off the top of my head, but this clearly will get them uh, the ability to provide more um, opportunity for people to apply for a home energy rebate and will clearly get us to the next uh, budget cycle. So I think they were very pleased with the amount of funding for both the energy rebate and the weatherization program. Um, 
No, I said they would have more freedom. Um, I didn't say they would have complete freedom. <laughs> I still have a responsibility as governor in that case. So, yes, sir. Oh, absolutely, and, and I was very clear in my remarks um, because I think it's very important for people to hear. You know, you take a look at the um, the article on the front page of the New York Times on June 26 related to shale gas, and how I mean people are characterizing some of the claims there as Ponzi scheme like. That that argument about how the lower 48s a wash in uh, shale gas um, has been used to throw a wrench in Alaska gas coming to the lower 48. Well, I think we have to pursue all options to commercialize Alaska's gas for Alaskans as well as for markets beyond. So this $200 million is side by side. This $200 million is in a savings account. Okay, it's not a check being written out. In fact, there's about $21.5 million in operating funds separate from that going to the Alaska Gas Line Development Corporation to do their work for the next year. So they have funds to do their work for the next year, plus there's a deposit in our own state savings account for $200 million for the potential of a future project there to bring Alaska's gas to Alaskans. We are still funding the $60 million that the legislature appropriated to the AGEA licensee to continue that effort. The bottom line is, until we have a project that is ready to go, we're going to keep pushing all options to commercialize that gas for Alaskans. So. Who else? Yeah, Pat. Do you have any like, examples of how you've been able to like, help spend in the operating budget, not the bills, but any cost savings or anything in this area? I mean, every day. Um, but every day, when you, when you look to how you reduce travel costs, how do you reduce uh, the cost of personnel, we hold positions open every day, so we're not spending money, kind of reining in our spending on the budgets. Uh, but again, the operating budget is a difficult beast to veto significant funds out of. I can certainly hit, you know, 10,000 here or, or 40,000 there. It would not make a difference in the, in the $400 million scheme of things uh, because I can't get to those parts of the operating budget that are driving that upward increase of spending, like Medicaid, for example. Um, that's, that's why we've asked the federal government for block grants of Medicaid so we can create our own uh, Medicaid program uh, for our lower income eligibles. Well, let me just make sure we got all budget questions answered before we do that. Yes. Well, that's, that's exactly why, that's one of the reasons I cited for having to restrain spending this year is because that unfunded liability, it sounds great that, that Alaska is going to have $15 billion in budget reserves, but on the other hand, we've got an unfunded liability of $11 billion over time. So in this year's budget, we're making a payment of $476 million against that unfunded liability. That payment rises each year. Um, it's going to be over $1 billion in roughly seven years, six or seven years, That just that annual payment against that unfunded liability. Um, in terms of how we address it, the ARM board, the Alaska Retirement Management Board, is working to address that now. And the question really is, we have an escalating payment schedule now to meet that obligation. The question that they're going to wrestle with and make a recommendation on is whether we should be making higher, more fixed payments across time. That's one one way they're they're working to address the problem. So the challenge is clearly there. The ARM board and the Department of Administration uh, is the place where they can do the analysis, make the recommendations to the administration and to the legislature. Um, that's, that's a challenge in front of us, as is Medicaid. Who else? Budget. Okay, I will sp speak to you, Steve, right, right afterwards on, on this topic. And anybody else, I'll, I'll hang around uh, for questions on something else, but thank you very much.